So I just got a, an electric piano for my daughter, Kalia, and she's about to take piano lessons and I'm really excited for her. And one of my biggest regrets as a child was not actually sticking with piano when I was a kid. I never really saw the value of it. It was something that I just did because I wanted to play drums in uh, the, the high school band. That lasted for about six months and then I quit. And as I kind of go back, one of the things I always talk about is this idea that we need to kind of expose kids to things that they might not know they're interested in, but also tap into their strengths and passions. It's not about one or the other. And as I mentioned, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't stick with piano. So not only did I get this for my daughter, Clea, this is an opportunity for me to do my own learning again, to kind of dig back into it. So one of the things I've already been doing is learning some new songs and playing. And it's amazing the ability that you have to actually play the piano, to do some of these different things in a way I could have never done when I was a kid. One of my favorite movies of all time is actually one of my daughter's favorite movies is uh, La La Land. I'm a big Ryan Gosling fan. If you know me at all, I love Ryan Gosling. I Barbie, Ryan Gosling makes that movie. I love Ryan Gosling. And so one of my favorite songs is City of Stars. And what I did right away is I just went on to YouTube and I learned how to play the opening riff of City of Stars. And I learned it and it actually has a really cool video that kind of just shows you the keys. Took an iPad, put it up on the piano and started to learn it. And that's the very first thing I taught my daughter Kalia. And so immediately she's interested in learning how to play because I found something that she loved and actually got her interested by teaching her that so she can kind of see the long-term goal and so then I started doing some of the the practices downloaded an app went through that process myself and the reason I share this all with you is it's an amazing time that doesn't matter our age doesn't matter how old we are we can learn anything that we are willing to actually want to learn but it is also understanding that the people we serve, really kind of getting them to understand why we're doing same, something, seeing the long-term vision, because I probably dropped out of piano because I could only play Mary Had a Little Lamb so many times. And I was like, this is not why I want to learn an instrument is to play these songs I don't care about. I was really into like Depeche Mode, uh, you know, and because I had, you know, older siblings that would listen to that. I wasn't interested in like nursery rhymes or anything like that. But that's all I was playing. And so kind of seeing where that could go, there's something really powerful. But the other thing that I think is really important is I'm showing my daughter my willingness to actually learn myself. And I think that's the most important aspect is when we ask our students, our kids to learn new things, do they see that we have a willingness to do the same thing? And that's why I really loved having Allison Selmer on this podcast because she is a principal in Vermont. She was actually in my UPenn course on laying the foundation for innovation education. And her reflections were absolutely amazing. I love learning from her. So I invited her on the podcast to talk about the process because she was really modeling her learning. And a lot of times we're really scared about, you know, administrators going to conferences, taking courses because they're like, oh, there's a, here's a bunch of new things that they're going to implement on to the staff and one of the things Allison and I talked about is the first thing you should be doing when you come back as an administrator as a leader saying hey I went to this event here's something I'm going to learn myself here's something I want to kind of figure out it's not about getting people to do things it's actually saying what am I going to do that's different how am I going to actually not just lead by example but learn by example and so Allison and I talked about that and so many other things I really love talking to her. Uh, you should check out her blog. It's li uh, linked in the description down below. I had a wonderful time with Allison. I know you're going to learn a lot from her. Uh, welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am so blessed today to have Allison Selmer. And actually, Allison, uh, weirdly enough, Allison reached out to me. I don't know if you remember this, about taking uh, my class with some of your colleagues uh, it, from your, your school district in, in Vermont. And uh, I had a great conversation with you. You actually ended up taking the class. And 
I don't know if you're honest with you, I like had no idea how impactful your work would be on me. Like as a person teaching the class, I just loved your reflections, uh, learning about the things that you're doing in your school. And I've actually, um, Allison was on another uh, early episode of the podcast doing three questions. But if you didn't catch that one, check out um, her blog down below because you're gonna learn a ton, especially if you're an administrator, you're trying to implement some change. So Allison has been a principal, um, I think, think for the last seven years. Uh, she's also taught, she, she just shared with me that you know you, you did designs, so you have different experiences. Um, it is a true blessing to have you. And she's so busy that we're doing this over the, you know, the, the December holidays. So thanks for taking time out of your day. I so appreciate that because I know like there's a million things you could be doing. And so you're sitting on this podcast with me. But Allison, if you could just kind of um, introduce yourself, tell us who you are, what you do today, how you got there. I think it's a great place to start. Sure. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Allison Selmer. I live in central Vermont, and I'm currently in my seventh year of being a school principal. Um, I'm actually a co-principal, so I work with pre-K through fourth grade students in a pre-K eight building. Oh, wow. I did. I actually didn't know that for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And uh, so my I have a co-principal and a director of special education in our building as well. So we're a three-person admin team. But I've, um, the other two colleagues have been there for two years and I've been there for now seven. Um, and let's see, I, 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 as you mentioned, I started in design. So education was not where I thought I was going to be. Um, and I am so glad I had the journey I had because I don't know if I would have been the teacher that I was or the leader that I am now if I hadn't had that design background working with different clientele, different mm. design firms, and the organization and the system process um, development skills before getting into this this work. But I, uh, I ended up going back to school and becoming an elementary education uh, teacher. So started in kindergarten and wasn't so sure that kindergarten was going to be the place for me, but I ended up absolutely loving it. And I had a great administrator who helped me along the way and inspired me to eventually get into administration. So, um, yeah. And the school that I'm currently in is the one that I started in uh, as an administrator. Oh, so really? I, That's cool. very, yeah. So I have very limited kind of exposure to um, different schools, districts, states. And so I really enjoy taking courses like the one I took with you. Mm -hmm where I get to see different perspectives and um, learn from people from different, not only different parts of the state, but parts of the country and outside of our country. It was, it was really enlightening. It was great. Yeah. And that was actually like, it is very interesting, you know, in those classes, because I think maybe half were in the U S and the other half were spread out all over the world. And, and that, that is something, especially and I'm going to ask you about this too, when you're a principal and you're a co-principal, so you have a little bit different perspective. Um, when I was a principal, you feel very isolated because you're the only one, right? In your school, you kind of feel like a lot of the weight of the world is on your shoulders. And when you start doing stuff that might be a little bit different than what people are used to, then you feel super alone. And I felt that a lot of my growth was connecting outside of my school and, oh, okay, I'm actually, you know, this isn't a weird thing to be doing. A lot of schools, they're maybe not in our district right now, but they're doing this here, they're doing this here, they're seeing really positive results uh, from this. And so I, I actually remember when I first became a principal, I actually went out of my way to connect with other principals um, around the world just to get different perspectives and to learn new things. And I don't know if I could have done it without them, to be honest with you. And, you know, there's a lot of those people like Dwight Carter was a principal. He's, that was like, geez, 14 years ago, him and I connected on Twitter and, uh, we're friends to this day because of that experience. But I, I do have to ask you, like, I I've never, I'm not gonna lie to you. I've not only never had someone who's a co-principal on my podcast. I don't think I've ever, I didn't even know that was a thing. So Thanks. Yeah. So tell, tell me about that. What, like, what does that look like? How does that work? Like, what, what, how does that work in your schools? I think that most people would make some parallel kind of, um, I guess, parallels to what an, um, an assistant principal would be. Mm -hmm. So we have the exact same 
responsibilities. I just do it with pre-K four and this other person does it with fifth through eighth grade. Hmm. So we, but we co-run the building. So right. everything that's school-wide pre-K eight, we do together. So anything that's related to food service, transportation, custodial maintenance, facilities, finances, that's all very much a, um, a decision that's made together. And then anything that's like curriculum-based, assessment-based, instructional hmm. Um, strategies is a little bit divided between elementary and middle level. So is that, um, is that unique in your school district? Is it a Vermont thing? Like, well, you... I think it, yeah, I think it might be a Vermont thing. Uh, and it's not necessarily unique to our district. Hmm. Um, in fact, our district, we have five other schools and then we have co-principals in each of the buildings, except for one building has a lead principal and an assistant principal. Right. And what I thought, so most people describe an assistant principal as somebody who deals mainly with um, behavior management, discipline right. aspects. And this building um, that, that I have in my district, they designed it a little bit differently. And this assistant principal focuses more on the curriculum and assessment for the whole school and not the behavior management. So hmm. I don't know. I, yeah, it's very, it was a unique thing for me to learn too. Well, yeah. And I, I like, I, you know, I appreciate it. Cause I know, um, the district that I was in, I was, I was very blessed to have, um, a really good mentor principal when I was assistant principal. And the interesting thing was he kind of like, he really focused on me being mentored to become a principal, not because like sometimes, uh, like I actually wrote this post about, you know, when you're assistant principal, part of your job is to kind of challenge the principal in the sense to ensure that they're not making decisions that are going to hurt the school, like not doing it publicly, but you know, kind of having those conversations saying like, I don't know if this is a good idea. Here's why. And, uh, his name was Archie Lilico. One of the things he said to me was do not ever think I'm doing something wrong and let me just go out there and do it. Like you have to say something before. Now, if I say I have to make this decision, you got to back me up, right? Cause there's sometimes things that are out of our control and whatever, but don't just like not say anything. That's part of your job. And, uh, and so I was really blessed But that. I'll be honest with you. Like I've, I, I wrote a blog post on that and I had people like messaging me privately saying, I wish my principal was like that, you know, cause you know, it was like, don't ever challenge the assistant principal. And if you're, you know, if you're in a position of authority and you don't, if you just surround yourself with people who think exactly like you, um, you're going to end up failing and you might not even know it, which is the weird thing right, about that. Right. So I, I, I do love that perspective. The, the thing that really I gravitated to when I was reading your stuff, Allison, was you're you're absolutely incredible learner. And one of the things you shared with me before we talked on the podcast, and I think we have it very much in common. Probably we weren't the best learners in school, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Like we we both had our you know ulter almost like ulterior motives for you know staying in school. You seemed to, what you shared with me is like you were more focused on the social aspect. I was focused on sports. It was like, basically like, Hey, you gotta do your schoolwork if you want to, you know, be allowed to play basketball. And so like, how, how do you think you change? Like, why did that change in you? Like what, what made that change? Cause you were, cause like when you were talking about stuff, it was really fascinating. Cause you're not like, Hey, we're doing this and just showing that you're like, Hey, this is what we used to do. Here's some of the, you know, redirection. Here's some of the things we had to think differently about. And, you know, kind of now here's where we're going. So like what, like, I think that was so amazing because a lot of times we just see the product of stuff and not the process. And you did a really beautiful job of, you know, connecting both. What made you, like, what kind of sparked you to really kind of embrace that notion of being a learner? And yeah, I think that came very late in life for me. Uh, mm -hmm. It was even after my first undergrad degree in college, like I, even my first round of college, I was very social and not really understanding, getting getting everything I could have out of it um, as far as a learner goes. And I, I think that something shifted when, maybe it was when I was doing design work and I realized the process is so much more impactful than the end product and result. Like, yeah, there's an end goal in mind, but it's it's fascinating to me to see how we get there and ways to make things more efficient and more effective. And so I'm I was 
more of a systems thinker than I thought I was. And then when I got into education, I kept taking courses and professional development trainings and I couldn't get enough of it. I, mm -hmm. that's when I really was like absorbing everything and wanted to know more and wanted to do things differently and take some risks in, in what I was doing. And so I think it, it evolved as I became more mature and realized the why behind it. I think I had more motivation. Um, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. I knew I wanted to eventually be an administrator. So there was more, um, relevance to the learning. When I was in elementary school, I did not understand why I had to learn certain math concepts, how this was going to be applied in, in life. And I think that was the way that we were taught back then too. This was way before Common Core State Standards, way before we shifted how our instructional practices and um, different models worked. Um, so yeah, I think I think it evolved over time. And one of the things you mentioned earlier about our first conversation was a phone call prior mm -hmm. to me taking the class. And I was very excited to try to have some of my faculty and staff join me in this learning experience. So, and I, that's something that I really enjoy doing. And I think that comes back to that social mm -hmm. piece for me. I enjoy learning with and alongside uh, and uh, others. And I think when you're an administrator and you can do that with the people that you work with in your right. building, it's so powerful. And the conversations you can have and, you know, the action planning that you can develop together is, is amazing. Um, and so I was very, I was like celebrity shocked when Stop you it. were able to like, give me your cell phone and we had a talk on the phone. I was like, oh my goodness, does anybody know who I'm talking to right now? So it was pretty fun. And then I was a little disappointed and bummed out that I didn't, have the, like I guess the belief in or the buy-in from the faculty and staff at the time yeah. it was the beginning I think it was the end of the summer beginning of the school year yeah, yeah. not the best time to try to ask right. people to yeah because it was right but, about like it was right before the class even started I remember that too yeah, yeah. so I was said oh it's not going to stop me from taking it so I took the course and now I brag all that I, I talk it up and I absolutely love the book um innovate inside the box uh, because there are so many uh, different restrictions that we didn't, I didn't know administrators yeah. have, especially in consolidated districts. Um, so yeah, you really have to get creative and, and innovative in, in how you approach things. So, um, but the other cool thing about everything I have learned and continue to learn through this course is how I can bring it to my faculty and staff yeah. without having them actually take the course yet. Right. So I'm kind of giving little snippets for them uh, to get a taste. Um, but yeah, I, now I'm, I'm this passionate lifelong learner, almost to a fault. I get very <laughs> excited and I want to bring back everything and do it all, all right. at once. I need to slow things down sometimes. Yeah. Well, and that's a reflective piece right there, right? Like, cause you, uh, even uh, as I was sharing with you before, as I was reading, you know, a lot of your work, I was thinking about my time as a principal and thinking, ah, oh, like, I wish I'd done more like what Allison was doing. Like sometimes you rush things, you you're expecting people to have the same enthusiasm level about something that you do, but you know, they don't necessarily see the same things that you do, or, you know, don't necessarily have the same experiences, but they're and like, I, I don't want to sound that in a condescending way, because there's, there's things that other people are really enthusiastic about that I'm not enthusiastic about. And because I haven't seen the same things that they've seen, I haven't had the same experiences. So it's kind of finding that that mesh between the two. And you know, I, I've written about this a ton. I'm probably going to name the podcast this. Um, the what I thought was really powerful is I, I I know everyone knows the term like leading by example, but I actually think it should be replaced by learning by example. When people see you learning, that is leadership. That is growth. It isn't just making the decisions. It's actually showing the process, and that's something that I really loved. Um, that's what one of the things I love about this class is seeing people's reflections and then walking them through like walking through their stuff because i it just it, it really pushes my own thinking and my own growth and um for those who don't know that this uh i teach a class with uh kitty novak uh, it's a udl certificate certificated course and i do the first part where we talk about really kind of the foundational elements of you know setting up udl uh, in your schools. And as you kind of mentioned, kind of systems thinking, because people get excited about UDL and then they're like, we're doing UDL. And it's like, why? I don't understand. You know, like this doesn't make any sense and not really making those connections. 
And so people like always want to kind of jump to stuff, but not really do the foundational thing. But we really focus on, and this is going to sound like some, I don't know, maybe hippie class. Cause I would have thought this was a hippie class when I went to university. Uh, there's no grades in the class. It's really kind of helping people to focus on their learning. And when you and I were talking before, one of the things that you said stuck out to you was I said at the beginning, you're going to get out of this class, what you put into it. So if you're, if you're here just to do, to check boxes and, you know, just to get a grade, that's not how I do it. It's really conversational. So like, can you, you can kind of just share what your thought process was through the experience, not just the content, because I appreciate the, the acknowledgement of the book, um, but really kind of the process, because I think that's the most important part for me. It's not like, here's content you should read. It's really, I want to immerse you in something and get you to think about how could you do this with your staff? How could you do this with your students? Not just tell you stuff, but get you to experience something different. Like what, how was that process for you? Yeah, I, I thought the format of the course itself was that alone was inspiring mm -hmm. because you are you're living what UDL should be or could be in your classrooms in your schools. The way that the course is designed is that you have this on demand module that you can mm -hmm. access at your and and this is also geared towards adult learning yep. and I thought that was really um, it was really important to know your audience, right? So you had given us this flexibility of and our use of our time to access the material, the information, kind of synthesize it and, and reflect on it. And then the way that we were expressing our learning and, and sharing our learning with others was through a blog that we, for me, so when you refer to my blog that I hmm. have, it is brand new. It is at the very beginning stages because of this course. And it was some, that was something that I was hesitant to right. do on my own, but because it was part of this course and you taught us how to do it, I was like, okay, I think I can do this. Right. These steps, and you were great with like guiding us along the way. So then once you develop your own blog, you, the course assignments were through reflective um, posts and the posts that you had were also kind of a challenge by choice. You could do a variety of different ways mm -hmm. to show what you we're thinking what you're taking out of this, what you're putting into it and what you're taking into your, your skill, your schools. So I thought it was, that part was amazing. And the flexibility you had with the timing. So you provided us with some milestone or kind of benchmark dates. So it would be great if you could get module one done by this time and module two by this time. And there's some flexibility with that mm -hmm. because life happens yep. <laughs> and work gets busy. And so that was really great. But I would say the the most inspiring and motivating piece of the whole course for me was the feedback. When you would when um, an assignment was due and we posted something, you would not only read it, you would also share with us strengths or compliments, but then you'd also give us additional things we could dig deeper in. We could go further with our work, um, and I couldn't wait to get that feedback from. <laughs> I was more yeah. excited to get the feedback than I was to see I got a one out of one on the assignment mm -hmm. for a grade. It was really for me not about the grade. And I think that's a mindset shift that a lot of um, adult educators are starting to make. Mm -hmm. um, that it's not about the grade, it's about the process. And what, yeah, and what you put into the course is what you get out of it. So um, yeah, I would highly encourage any adult educator in any aspect, um, whether you're a para, a teacher, um, an administrator to, mm -hmm. to take the course. Well, that, and like, I, I've been trying to think about the terminology that I want to use with this. Cause it's, it's like conversation as assessment, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if that's the right terminology, but the, so just to kind of, for people that maybe don't really understand this part. They're the one that Allison's referring to basically the only mark you could get was one. <laughs> like there is no point eight point. There's one, it was one out of one. Right. And the reasoning behind that is if it's like an A, B, C, whatever, it's the same mentality that educators can have this really easily. They just look at the grade and ignore the, the comments or the conversation. And so when you just kind of know, like that's going to be there, then you do start to kind of dig in and, and the. I think that thing that's really important for me and I, I was really are, you know, try to articulate this as best as possible, but it is different. And this is, you did this so well and so did everyone in the class, to be honest with you, it was, um, 
it was like, you all have your own experiences. You have your own jobs, take the content and mix it into your current work. So for me to say like, Hey, you're like an instructional coach. I've never been an instructional coach, but I'm going to grade you on your ability to be an instructional coach. Doesn't make any sense to me because I don't know the role. So that, I think that's why it's like, Hey, here's some perspectives. And you know, I don't, maybe this will help you a little bit. Um, the other thing too, and I, I I'm going to call, I don't know if I'm calling you out. I don't want to make you feel bad at all. You were late with some assignments. Right, and, yeah. and the reason I'm bringing this up is because I was the, the, if you say like, here's a hard deadline. And if you don't get it in by this time, you lose grades. Then I guarantee you, if I would have said that to you, just kind of knowing your personality, you would have got it in on time, but then it wouldn't have been as good. And when you know, like, Hey, like I got stuff going on. I actually want to put effort into this. Then like you're everything you like, there's nothing I was like, Oh, this felt rushed by you. Do you know what I mean? And so that's, that's why I do it that way is because sometimes people are more concerned about the deadline than the, the effort and the con of the content. Does that mean, like, I don't know if that makes sense, how I kind of frame that, but like, and it was like, and by the way, I'm not giving Allison heck <laughs> <laughs> for doing this. Like it was very clearly articulated. Like you don't have to message me. You don't have to like ask for an extension just try to get it around this time. And if you need more time, because as you said, life happens then, but I just want really good stuff. That was the biggest intent. Not, I want it on time. It was, I want good stuff. And if it's not on time, I'd rather have good stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that was very well articulated because that's exactly how I felt. I'm like, well, I could rush and get this done tomorrow right. or I could do something that I'm really actually going to use and bring back to my school. So yeah. Yeah, that was, I just I I I and I I love it because it it is uh it is I think I told you this the stuff that I teach I remember I had a teacher in college who did something similar and I thought what is this person doing like this is just so strange and then I was like this is actually the best class I've ever taken because I actually cared about what I was doing not the grade but what I was doing and I thought that was um you know that was it always resonated with me because I, at first I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> I also, I think it's so much more memorable too, hmm. of a course. Like, I don't think I'll ever forget what I did in this course. It's not just kind of a one, one hour webinar that you're like, all right, moving on. Right. Yeah, the, 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 whole, the, the checklist of learning just bugs me. Yeah. Same. But we, we set up stuff like that too, right? Yes. So, so yeah. 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 And that, that was very articulate. So here's a, here's a question I have for you. So you, you did some really amazing reflections. Um, I actually, I'm going to be honest with you and you mentioned this, now you're gonna make me look bad. You, you just started blogging and you're like a million times better of a writer than I am already. And so I'm like, seriously, I've been doing this for like 15 years and I also just pops in and just starts doing stuff. Amazing. So like you did like a, did a really well, uh, a really great job. What is something that you kind of took from the process that you look at? Maybe you're gonna do something different. Maybe you're gonna do something, uh, you know, well, how you maybe move forward, you know, something that you look back at, like what was kind of like a takeaway that you're gonna actually implement um, into your own school process into maybe some of the things you do with your staff? I think this is gonna be ongoing. I don't know if I have an actual like tangible piece. I think mm -hmm. that the, again, going back to the book, like in innovating inside the box, I think what I, I need to do with my faculty and staff and my co-principals mm -hmm. and colleagues is look at our current systems, look at what we can do to improve and um, make more efficient. And so that things can get a little bit more streamlined. I think, so I guess one of the bigger things I'll be taking away is um, how do we do less but better mm -hmm. <laughs> simplify so i don't mean less that than like we would um lower our bar lower our mm -hmm. standards or anything like that i mean we keep at in our district we keep adding and adding and adding to people's plates and everyone's overwhelmed everybody's exhausted they feel that they're tapped out but i'm thinking there's got to be a different way we mm -hmm. can do this better but i can't do that on my own i can't come up with a system on my own. Um, I took another course with Allie Hearn um, over the summer. I don't know if you're familiar with her work, but she 
had something that resonated with me too, where it was doing things with instead of doing things mm -hmm. to or for. Mm -hmm. And um, I, so that's something that I've been trying to keep in the front of my mind too, when I bring things back to school. Um, but yeah, I think UDL or well, yeah, Universal Design for Learning is not a new acronym for our school, but I would say we are not implementing it with um, any universal um, at any universal level right now. So there's pockets of people who are doing mm -hmm. pockets of it. And so I think my my hope for coming into this new school year or this like January um, is to start to infuse more of that in our everyday. So bring it into our early release time for um, our trainings with our faculty and staff and our new hires and just kind of look at all of our systems and put elements into place that allow for flexibility, allow for challenge by choice, allow adults to feel like they're adults and lifelong learners. So um, yeah, I don't know. I don't have a tangible piece I'm taking away. I feel like there's just so much that... I'm, I'm trying to kind of synthesize and absorb and, and put into my practice. So um, I also think you mentioned like leading by example and learning by example. I think that's a huge piece of this. Um, I do have very high standards for everyone, including myself, mm -hmm. and I will model that. I will um, kind of put myself out there to show I'm not asking more of somebody else than I would ever ask of myself. And um, so yeah, I, there's, that's a kind of a tricky question to answer. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the, the thing that I think is really important in, as an administrator, there's always this fear that you take a course, you go to a PD, a conference, whatever, and then all of a sudden you're going to come back and say, hey, everyone, you're all doing this, right? And that's kind of the, the fear. And I get that. But I think the first thing we should be saying when we go to these events, take these courses, do different things is, Hey everyone, I went to this and here's things that I learned and I'm trying to develop and I'm trying to grow in. So they see you like, because yeah. then you can kind of see that process of, of learning. Right. And that was when I, when I was a principal, that's when I started blogging yeah. and it was, it was kind of like this, I knew everyone in my staff was reading it, but it was like a, it was like this weird little secret. Like nobody would talk to me about it, huh. but they would they would know like uh, here and there, there'd be like little mentions, but I wanted to kind of, you know, weirdly enough, I wanted them to see some of my uncertainty with things and that I was trying to kind of like work my way through and understand things in a different way, not just see here, here it is. Here's what we're doing. Here's this thing. It's like, Hey, here's things I'm struggling with. Here's things that, you know, I really kind of understand. So, um, has, I'm curious, like, did anyone, did anyone on your staff mention reading your, your blogs? Like, no, <laughs> but that's my fault. I have not promoted it as much as I hope to in the future. And that, I guess that is a huge takeaway for me is continuing the blog. Hmm. Um, now that that's started and now that you're promoting it on this, yeah. I, well, a bunch of people are going to see it now. Cause it's in the description down below everybody. Yeah. The accountability measures there. So um, yeah. no, I have a lot of ideas, a lot of things that I want to put out there. And I think going back to something you said too earlier about feeling somewhat isolated in this job, in this position, mm -hmm. being an administrator, and you can feel very isolated, especially when you're the only administrator. And I'm very fortunate to have an amazing team that I work with in my building. And I have a great um, group of colleagues in my district that we meet with, at, with monthly. But we do get very kind of like tunnel vision of we're in yep. this little bubble in central Vermont and we do things the way we do things because they've worked that way. Mm -hmm. But when we branch out, oh my goodness, we can see so many different perspectives and ideas and um, things like, why didn't we try that? Why, why, why didn't we think of that? Um, so this course was also really helpful in that way too. Um, getting ideas and inspiration from people from all different um, parts of the country and outside of the country. And so I think that that was another big piece of it. So I, there's actually one of my classroom teachers talked a lot about one year about um, how much we as classroom teachers are doing within our own classroom 
And what are we doing beyond our classroom within our school system? And what are we doing globally beyond that? Like, how are we branching out and sharing what we're work, what we're doing? Because what we're doing is great work. Right. But we're not, we're not sharing it. We're 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 really keeping it here in Vermont. So um, yeah, I think that's that was that's another piece. But again, like you said, sharing that with everybody in this idea that I'm still learning and I'm still perfecting and mm-hmm. growing this practice. Like it's it's not where I want it to be yet. And, and I'm okay with that. Like I'm I'm okay putting myself out there being vulnerable and sharing that that it's a work in progress. Yeah. And like, and for people listening there, I'm going to link this video down below. It's called obvious to you, amazing to others. And it, it is, you know, I, I really appreciate that you share that perspective that, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, we're so innovative and forward thinking. I'm like, you might be within your own district compared to what you're doing two years ago. But if you go outside of your district, like you're behind in so many ways. And some people don't realize that because they don't look outside of their district. But even when that is the case, there's things in those districts that are might be not as innovative forward thinking, they're still doing really incredible things, but no one knows. And I love that the video it's I think it's Derek Sivers, he talks about sometimes the things that we do that are just what we do. And we don't even think about it to someone else it's like, wow, I never even thought of that. It's one of the best ideas ever. And it's one of my favorite videos to share because I think that was something that I really took away from um, your work is that the stuff that you kind of just do, I was like, this is incredible, right? And um, really kind of embracing that. I'm gonna tell you, everyone listening to this right now, Allison, this is the first podcast. It's not gonna be your last, I'm telling you. This is uh, really incredible stuff and you'll see it in your blog. And so Allison, I gotta, Thanks so much for your time today. Like, absolutely. Thank you. I honestly can't, you know, I feel horrible that you're doing this and it's like three days before new year's it's after Christmas. So just thanks for taking the time to, um, be on the podcast. Cause I was just, I was just so impressed by your work and I, I, I just wanted to have you on the podcast. I actually sent you an email. You never responded forever. I'm like, Oh, what did I do? He's not gonna I know, I know. <laughs> like I said, things got busy, but then I reached back out and I was like, if you still have me, I would oh, love yeah, to be absolutely here. anytime. <laughs> But um, no, this was great. And I really appreciate you providing the opportunity, you with Katie Novak um, for the UDL course. That's been great. So yeah, yeah. like, hey, I, I benefit from it every single time in the perspectives that, you know, people like yourself bring, because there's just so much I learned from you. So um, everyone, thank you so much for listening. Allison, thank you. I hope you have a great 2024. Um, anyone listening to this right now, it already is. So uh, I wish you all the best and check out Allison's uh, blog and uh comment on it that would be really cool but you know i allison would be a great example if you want to start your own so i think that would be a great place to start you don't have to actually you know take the class to start your own you know spaces to you know share your learning with the world so allison thanks for being here thanks everyone for listening i hope you have a wonderful day